Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Salt Lake City, Utah. My name is Scott, and I'll be your liturgist today. Would you please stand as you're able in body and in spirit for the call to worship? The days are surely coming, says our God. The day is here to affirm a new covenant. God's law will be written on our hearts. Our creator claims us and forgives our faith faithlessness. We are we are the the God who loves us. We are we are the God, 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 us. God offers us the joy and salvation. Our brokenness can be healed and wholeness restored. We are the Please remain standing for the opening hymn of praise, God of grace and God of glory, number 577 in your hymnal.
Our scripture reading today comes to us from the gospel according to John. Now among those who went to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. This is the word of God spoken for us this day. Please raise your hand if you have a prayer card and the ushers will collect them while we hear the musical reflection. You are also invited to light candles in the back of the sanctuary at this time. For those worshiping online, please post prayers in the comments and prepare bread and juice for Holy Communion at your home. Today's anthem sung by our chancel choir is Song of Assurance. This is a newly composed piece written by Mark Patterson that will feature Mary Otterstrom on the violin, Mike Green on the cello, and Clara Jung at the piano with Scott Mills conducting. This anthem is dedicated to all of the loved ones lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. This last week will have been four years since the shutdown here in the US. Thank you to Becky, and Buck Becky Buxton and Mike Green for putting together the pictures and video that takes our church family back to those days.
come on down, kids. Are those who are young at heart? you to stand up and and I want you to follow me so just follow me say thank you to the choir it was really wonderful. thank you to Scott and, and, and greetings to um, Larry up there who probably thinks we're going out of the camera range so we should get back in it let's go for a walk say wave to the people at home okay let's go for a walk again say hi to Bill Hi to Bob, hi to Nancy, come on in. Come on, let's go for a walk. All right, okay. Now, now sit down. Go ahead. Why did you do that? Oh, I told you to. And you trusted me to take you on a little trip, just like that? Yeah, well, you know, um, our body is full of a whole lot of really interesting stuff that we're going to talk more about in Sunday school. But a couple little bits of it. There's an apostle named Philip who is approached by two guys from Greece, two Greek guys. And they say, we want to see Jesus. The Bible doesn't tell us why they want to see Jesus. You know, it could be that he was just kind of a famous guy and they wanted his autograph. I don't know. What do you think? He took them and they went there. And then a little later in it, Jesus talks more about what it means to follow him. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in Sunday school. But I think this lesson in, in the sanctuary today, mostly I want to leave you with the question the people out there and the people, the people at home. The question of why do you follow? Oftentimes, if, if someone doesn't follow me, it's because you've asked them, do you know where this is? Do you know how to get here? So oftentimes when somebody says follow, it's because you've asked a question. So I want you to think in your heart, before we get over to the Sunday school and all those big people back there and the people at home, to think about what is the question that you ask before Jesus says, follow me? What is the question you would ask of Jesus before Jesus says, follow me? As pastor says, let's pray. Holy God. Thank you for bringing us here together as family. Thank you for giving us hearts and minds that are curious about you. But most of all, thank you for planting that little seed that helps us grow closer and closer to you as we follow. And thank you for making us just the way we are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Jesus started his public life, the very first thing Jesus said to the people was, follow me. After Jesus defeated Satan's temptations, he came to Galilee and called his disciples. When Jesus saw two brothers, Peter and Andrew, just called them, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. The Bible said, at once 
they follow Jesus. When Jesus saw the others, Jesus also said, follow me, and they followed. It is the beginning of the Jesus' public life. And we can find the very same expression in today's text. Today's text is the time of Jesus' public life that reaches the climax. During Passover, Jesus went to Jerusalem. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, Jesus sat upon a young donkey, and the great crowd welcomed Jesus. People were especially excited for Jesus because they heard the news that Jesus called Lazarus back to life. They took palm branches and went out to meet him and shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Moreover, some Greeks, not just Jewish, some Greeks who went up to worship at the feast asked to see Jesus. When Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus about that, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. When Jesus spoke this, Jesus' disciples were very happy because it looked like Jesus would receive the glory as they really wanted. They were excited with high expectation of glory and honor. Finally, yes, Jesus will be a king or a leader of Israel. Glory, honor, power. However, Jesus said a very strange thing. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. At the time, disciples could not understand the meaning of what Jesus said because they already served and they followed Jesus. When Jesus called them, they followed Jesus at once. For three years, they faithfully followed and served as Jesus' disciples. That is why Peter said, we have left everything to follow you. That means they already followed. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, Jesus was welcomed enthusiastically by a cheering crowd. Now, people are glorifying Jesus. They called Jesus the King of Israel. Jesus was a hero of the Israelites. By their account, the next day was coronation. Yes, why not? Moreover, Jesus also said, the hour has come for the Son of God to be glorified. So, when Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me, they would say, sure, absolutely, we will follow you with great joy. However, they did not understand what Jesus wanted to say. They missed Jesus' teaching. I tell you the truth. Unless a corner of wheat falls to the ground, and dies, it remains only a seed, single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And they did not know which way they had to go with Jesus. If so, why did Jesus say, follow me again, although his disciples already followed Jesus? What is the meaning of this follow me? From here, we must see the most important thing of Christian's life that Jesus wants from us. Follow me. Follow me did not just mean follow me. It contains the meaning of become a servant. Jesus clearly said, whoever serves me must follow me. 
Here, the meaning of serve in Greek is diakoneo. And it, said, it has two different meanings. One is serving, and the other is ministering. That is, the meaning of whoever serves me must follow me is, will you become a servant to serve me? If so, follow me. It was totally different from follow me, what the disciples expected and wanted. When disciples expected, wanted honor, glory, and the power with Jesus, Jesus asked them for serve and sacrifice. Therefore, Jesus' word contained, you have to become a servant like me. As we know, Jesus did not come to be served as a noblesse, like a prince of an aristocrat. Jesus proclaimed, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I am among you as one who serves. Jesus was God, but Jesus did not demand and cling to his rights as God. Jesus laid aside his mighty power and glory, took the disguise of a slave, and became like a man. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. It was not because Jesus was a servant. It was because Jesus wanted to serve us, save us, from the power of sin and death. As Jesus obeyed God and served as a servant, Jesus Christ saved us and became our Lord and Savior. Follow me. In today's text was the meaning that please serve my people and my church as I served you. It also meant Please support my people and my church with the power of love that I showed. Of course, the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying. They just focused all their attention on how they would enjoy the glory when Jesus was glorified. That is why Peter rebuked Jesus. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you when Jesus explained about his suffering, death, and resurrection. But we have to know it is an indispensable thing to become a servant for following Jesus Christ because it is the only way to follow him, only way to follow him. Today's text testified disciples also realized what Jesus said after they experienced Jesus' resurrection. Let's think about ourselves. How about us? We say we are Christians. That is, we have to serve Jesus Christ. We have to follow the way that Jesus went. Because it is God's command. Jesus asked, Paul clearly testified, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Definitely, following Jesus is not easy. To follow Jesus, we have to experience lots of difficulties and hardships because our enemy Satan continuously hinders our spiritual journey and attacks us to make us fail at following Jesus. Satan's power always tries to steal our soul from our Lord. We have to experience every day. When I was a boy, I sang a hymn, Where He Leads Me. It's a 338 in the United Hymnal. 
without any understanding about the meaning of the lyrics. But after I understood the meaning of the lyrics, I was very afraid of singing this song because it was too heavy for, sing, for me to sing. Wow. The lyrics are, I can hear my Savior calling. Take my cross and follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him the old way. The second verse is much grimmer. I will go with him through the garden. I will go with him through the garden. I will follow him. I will go with him all the way. We are servants who work together for God's kingdom and God's glory. Therefore, our lives should be used to serve Jesus Christ. Our talent, our power, our time, and our abilities should be used for Jesus Christ and his church. Because our Lord commanded, our Lord asked, our Lord entrusted. How about us? Do you think you are using your talent, your time, your abilities for Jesus Christ and his church? Are you using your life for the Lord? We have to use what we have for Jesus Christ because we have nothing that we did not receive from our Lord. Who is Jesus' disciple? What is the meaning of discipleship? It is following Jesus. That is, the person who follows Jesus Christ is the disciple. And the following Jesus is the meaning of discipleship. That is why we have to follow Jesus Christ. And there is a basic principle of following Jesus. Following Jesus should be until the morning of Easter. We have to go until the morning of Easter. We have to follow him to the night of the Garden of Gethsemane. We have to follow until the heat of Golgotha. We have to go through the cross of the Calvary with Christ. Now, Jesus is asking the very same thing. Follow me. What is your answer? What is your resolution? Jesus said, where I am, my servant also will be. If we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Master of our lives, we have to be where Jesus is. We have to be where Jesus is at any time, any place. We know it is absolutely not easy way because of Satan's power. But Jesus clearly proclaimed, my father will honor the one who serves me. Jesus also asked, father, I want those you gave me to be with me where I am then they can see my glory which you gave me because you loved me before the creation of the world. It means Jesus promised anyone who follows Jesus until the morning of Easter will participate in the glory of God. Who are we? We are Jesus' disciples who have been called for God's kingdom and God's glory. Let's do not forget who we are, our identity. Let's answer yes when Jesus asks, follow me. Yes, we cannot go every, everywhere. We cannot everything. But we need to answer what I can do, I will do. I will follow you. I pray we can follow Jesus with great joy at his calling. I pray we can follow him until 
the morning of Easter, the victory. I press to get here from our Lord. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's go until the morning of Easter. Let's do not stop on the halfway. Let's go together as God's faithful servant. Go to the morning of Easter. It is the meaning of follow me. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for giving us this time to worship you. Thank you for giving us your wonderful message of love. Because you loved us, you called us your disciples. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your power of love. Because you called us your disciples and your church. We want to serve you as your faithful servant. As your servants, we want to follow you until the morning of Easter. The time of victory. The place of victory. Please help us realize what you want from us. Please help us boldly follow you. Please help us do not stop halfway. Please help us hear from you. Well done, good and faithful servant. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is time for us to open our hearts and share our joy and concern. We want to pray for one another. We want to remember each other in our hearts and in our prayers. Let's share our joy and concern together. Anything there? Yeah, if we missed, you can share now here. So. Is there anything in the Facebook and YouTube? Nothing. Uh, prayers for healing for my friend Melinda. She is having a tumor in her kidney removed on Thursday. Oh, pretty big surgery. Prayers of healing for John Dodd of Philadelphia as he recovers from orthopedic surgery. Prayers for, of healing for what is it, Janine? Will Wilma? Is it right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as she is uh, suffering from, what is that? Debilitating lower back pain. Okay. Thank you for sharing. If you missed, you can share. You already know we have some people who are in a really hard time. It's not just because of a physical matter, mental matter, social relationship matter, financial matter, all the, the family matter. We need to pray for them because we believe we are one body of Christ. We have to ask our Lord for them because we believe we love each other within God. Sometimes we don't know who are they. But it is our duty as Christians because our Lord asked. And they also believe when you pray for each other, God will do something amazing. Although we don't know yet, God will do something amazing for us and for God's glory. That is why we want to support each other. We want to pray for each other. Let's close our eyes and pray for our brothers and sisters who have concerns in silence for a moment. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today 
in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you today for your unfailing love and mercy. Although we miss the way that you showed, you are still there wanting to let us know who you are and who we are. When we foolish think we can handle everything in our lives, you are there waiting until we ask you. We depend on you. When we struggle through the consequences of poor decisions that we have made, you again are there to show the right way and then encourage us. We are thankful to know that you are truly care for each and every one of us. We praise you for being our solid rock and we thank you for loving us so much and that you will never let us down. May your Holy Spirit open our eyes so we may continue to grow closer to you. May we be joyful people who clearly demonstrate your love to the world. Please extend on to each of us the wisdom, the strength, and the courage to meet each new day and each new challenge. Oh, Father, this time we want to pray for the people who are in our minds and hearts. There are so many people who are struggling against their innings and weakness. Some of your children are experiencing physical hardships. Some are wrestling with their human relationships. Some are struggling almost daily with anxiety and depression. Some have to carry a daily sorrow in their hearts, often hidden behind their smile. Some people are in really hard time because they lost their loved one. Some people, they experience really, really difficult things because of finance matter. As we consider those around us who are fighting sickness, disease, and battles beyond compare, help us to meet them with hearts full of compassion. Let us find a way to reach out to them so that they find a strength that eases their pain and reminds them that they are not alone. Bless us with the warmth of strong relationships and the strength to help those in our community that need help. Please help us be the congregation that can show your power of love to the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is time for offering. Turning closed doors into open tables where everyone belongs. This is our statement to perform God's love to the world. To be together with us anytime you can support the First United Methodist Church of Salt Lake City. You can give your time, talent, your power, and your treasure to the church. Everything goes to support these wonderful ministries. We also welcome visitors. If you are here as a visitor and you want to connect with this community, please let us know. We look forward to being in connection with you. Now, as we give, we invite you to sing our offering song.
for our offering for God. We dedicate these offerings to the proclamation of your word, the teaching of your ways, and the living of your will for all humankind. We reach out with joy and gladness to offer your love to the world. May these gifts enable the sharing of your presence with many who have not experienced a sense of their own value as your children. As we keep covenant with you, we would also share its joy and obligations with our neighbors. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a seat. Announcement. Can I have the first slide for the announcements? Okay, the next slide, <laughs> please. Holy Week, so next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Uh, the following Thursday after Palm Sunday is Monday, Thursday. That'll be held at Centenary at uh, There'll be a feast, a love feast, a uh, communion, and foot washing. Next slide, please. Good Friday, um, there's an ecumenical procession of the cross at 6.30. Uh, meet at the Cathedral of the Madeline. And then, of course, Easter Sunday is March 31st, 11.15 uh, a.m. here at First Methodist Church. Uh, <clears throat> we're continuing adult Sunday school. Uh, the last uh, Lenten study will be March 24th on Palm Sunday. That's at 9.30 a.m. You're welcome to join, even if you haven't uh, attended the other uh, five Sundays. Next slide, please. Uh, adult Sunday school is going to go bowling. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's today at 2 p.m. at Bonwood Bowl at $7 for two games and shoe rental. And everyone's invited. Uh, Easter egg hunt is next, or is on uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't have any details there, but. There's an Easter egg hunt on Easter Sunday, so bring your basket. There we go. Okay, next slide, please. There's a celebration of life for Ginger Lenore Phillips. Uh, that is next Saturday at 11 a.m. here at First United Methodist Church. Um, please come and attend um, that celebration of life for her. And then if you've thought about uh, joining uh, United Methodist Time, our United Methodist Church, this is the time. Actually, any time's a good time. Um, East, at Easter, we'll celebrate and welcome in new members. Um, please talk to Reverend Kyung Soo today if you're um, interested. And then Pine Cliff Camp. Uh, that happens all summer, depending on which, how old you are, which group you're in. Please look at, uh, or go to pinecliffcamputah.org for more details. And then um, also update your director information. If that's changed, we have a new administrator, Jen Caldwell. Uh, her office is Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then, of course, we have coffee every Sunday after worship. So please join us. Um, we'll be back downstairs in the fellowship hall, thanks to Mike getting the elevator <laughs> fixed. So, And that's it for the announcements. Okay, it is the time for passing the peace of Christ. We want to greet each other with Jesus' name, and we want to bless each other with Jesus' name. Let's bless each other with Jesus' name. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. It is time for communion service. Let's prepare our communion service.
Christ our Lord invites all to his table of grace. With this amazing invitation, we want to enjoy God's love together before God and one another. In the United Methodist Church, we believe in an open table. That means everyone can be together. They want. Because it is grace. Just say thank you, God. That's it. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of God's might act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice. Because we believe we are God's people, with this confidence, we want to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let's pray. Our eternal God, thank you for giving this time to remind your love. Again, you fed us at your table with your holy, holy body and blood. We give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Please grant that we may live in this world in the strength of your spirit. Go into the world with your power of love and then serve others as you served us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As a closing hymn, we'll sing, yes, again, Where He Leads Me. <laughs> 338. Jesus asked to follow me. It is not just to follow. Just that, yeah, it is, we have to remember, it is not just to follow like the kindergarten. 
keys. Follow means serving and ministering. That means when we follow Jesus Christ, we have to do something for God. It is the meaning of follow me. That is why really hard. But we believe God will give us glory with him. That is why we want to follow him. Don't forget, not just follow. There is something to do, we have to do. Don't forget, our Lord calls us because we are God's disciples. Let's pray. We go into the word in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not afraid for we know God's presence. We feel empowered to endure all things. We go into the word with the confidence and courage from God. We believe the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the transferring power of the Holy Spirit. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. God will be with us today and forever. Amen.